Let's be frank with ourselves. Life is getting more hectic and demanding all the time, and we aren't getting any younger. It seems that there's only one way to cope. Multitasking. A stupidly high minded individuals all over the internet, known as gurus, life hackers, and clowns, are trying to convince you of that very fact. The idea behind it is that it increases the productivity and the efficiency of the individual. Even though thousands of unofficial or unqualified people support the idea, similar to flat earthers or moon truthers, it's still just a theory, with no major study behind it. Ironically, the whole concept can be compared to juggling balls. Because juggling one ball or one task is relatively easy and simple for your brain to focus on. Two balls split your brain's focus, making one have more mistakes. And three or more balls is going to be chaotic no matter how good one is initially. To truly debug the false theory of multitasking, let's start off with one ball and talk about what is multitasking and what happens within our brain. Secondly, let's add our second ball and talk about how multitasking affects us in our daily lives. And lastly, as we reach the end of our show and as it becomes chaotic, let's discuss the major impacts of multitasking on a global scale. Now then, as we throw our very first ball up into the air, let's ask the question, what is multitasking? According to journalist Kristen Rosen, the term was first used in the 1960s to, to describe computer performance. The human brain, however, is not a computer, and the definition changed along with it over time. Today, multitasking is defined as the ability to do multiple things simultaneously by Cambridge Dictionary, and is typically used to describe human beings. Moreover, unlike computers, the human attention is a very limited resource. The American Psychological Association, or APA, model visual attention like being like a flashlight. It can only be shown in one direction at any given moment. Our primary focus, what we're paying most attention to, is like the lightly brit center of that flashlight. It can also be visualized like a camera lens. One can choose to narrow in their focus and concentrate on details, or narrow out to be aware of multiple things simultaneously. But zooming in and out at the exact same time is physically impossible. Even though in this context, multitasking should be impossible, but for an unknown reason, our brain still encourages the action. According to Nicholas Carr, our brain itself encourages the action of multitasking because it craves information. Even though in practicality, it's not that good at processing data at the speed or intensity we find ourselves today. This is partially due to the fact that our short-term working memory or working memory for short, has a very small capacity. Working memory essentially is the context of one's consciousness at any given moment. What you're aware of right now, which is a handsome Indian kid, is part of your working memory. What you're not aware of is not part of your working memory. The whole concept can be compared or it can be conceptualized in the 1950s book, The Magical Number 7. In the book, the author states that one's working memory can only hold seven pieces of information at any given moment, whether that be a seven digit number or the names of seven different people. When people exceed this number, such as studying last minute before a test, what happens is information starts exiting and entering their working memory at the exact same time. This phenomenon causes quite literally cognitive overload. In this situation, one can't truly focus on anything because their brain doesn't have the function or capacity to do so because it's preoccupied on processing the current overload of data. Now then, now that we know why we multitask, let's move on and discuss how multitasking affects us in our daily lives. According to those gurus that I mentioned earlier, multitasking can be categorized into three different groups that we use it in our daily lives. First, it's to do uh, two tasks simultaneously. Second, is to move back and forth from one task to another. And lastly, is to do a number of tasks in rapid succession. Now, most people, including you and me, multitask in one of these forms every single day. According to Professor McFawn Apkin, we multitask on a daily basis because we crave information and FOMO. 
Wait, what's FOMO? FOMO is the fear of missing out. We fear in missing out in tweets, Instagram notifications, emails, and text messages. FOMO is also the reason why most people scroll through their Instagram feed while they're on their toilet or watch cute cat videos while they're in their college lectures. FOMO causes us to be constantly connected through digital distractions that we receive on our smartphones, smartwatches, and laptops. Now, being constantly connected isn't bad per se, but we fail to look at the consequences that come with it. One prime example would be the decrease in attention span. As multitasking has been on the rise, attention span sadly has not. According to Professor Elizabeth Mosgrove, the attention span of millennials has dropped to a measly 8 seconds, while the attention span of Gen Z, my generation, has dropped to a whopping 2.8 seconds. She continues to state that this decrease in attention span is directly correlated with the increase of multitasking that people do through technology or other means. On top of all of that, my generation spends at least six hours on their phone every single day. That's almost a full-time job. Most of the time when we're on our phone is usually during work or at school. This is when FOMO is the strongest and when we have a sharp increase in boredom. Now, I'm not trying to discredit people's way of life because I spend at least seven hours on my phone every day. But what I am saying is when people multitask to be more productive or to entertain themselves while they're doing their work, the exact opposite happens. Now then, as we reach the end of our show, let's talk about how multitasking can truly be chaotic. And let's add our very last ball. Up until now, we've been mainly focusing on the more goofy or fun aspects of multitasking. But we need to realize that multitasking can be deadly. Multitasking at your home or at your work is relatively fine and has few harm, besides a slight decrease in productivity. But engaging in distractive actions behind the steering wheel not only puts the driver, but everyone else on the road at harm. The CDC states that roughly 9 people die every day because of inattentive driving. Meanwhile, another 1,000 people sustain an injury because they chose to take their eyes off the road. Accidents happen in seconds, and drivers are expected to react instantaneously. But mundane actions such as talking to the passenger, daydreaming, or even listening to music can be very distracting to a driver and undermine this short reaction time. According to the CDC, 400,000 people sustain an injury every year because of inattentive driving. And 4,000 of those people don't come back home. Majority of these people die in the process of multitasking or die of believing that they can text and drive. On top of all of this, thousands of other people die because of inattentive cooking, skiing, using a power tool, or other avoidable accidents. Multitasking fundamentally isn't a big problem. The problem of multitasking is its side effects. It comes with the effect of distracting the user that leads to its death. Looking back on my speech, we can see that multitasking was perfectly analogized by juggling. Because juggling one ball is easy. Two balls is relatively hard. And three balls is difficult and can cause chaotic events to happen. Thank you.